Hey guys, it's Speak Communications, and now for something completely different. Well, not really, because I have done, this is not going to be the first comic book review I've done. I did one on an issue of the Marvel Comics uh, series of RoboCop, and I also did one about, you know, the Marvel Comics adaptation of RoboCop. But, see, I didn't really have c copies of those comics, except for the first one, which I think I did show in a video. But I do have, and I did get these a while back, and I just didn't get around to reading them until now. I do have every, all four issues of the Dark Horse comic of RoboCop Roulette. Um, and so I thought, why not do a quick little video, you know, showcasing my thoughts on Roulette, you know, right after I read it, you know, while it's fresh in my mind. Uh, yeah, this 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 cover is is really stupid. Thankfully, the RoboCop doesn't fight a fucking robot rabbit. So, RoboCop doesn't fight a robot bunny rabbit in the comic. So, but it's still a really shitty. It's a really stupid cover. Um, anyway, let's get started with the review of the comic, shall we? Um, see, I'm no expert in you know comics and whatever, but this is okay. It was decent. It was a time waster. It was inter it was it was a you know worth a read. I mean, I mean, if if you're a diehard Robocop fan and you can find these, yeah, sure, give them you know give them a look. But you know, it's definitely a lot better than Robocop three. But you know, there are some things that are a little bit kind of disappointing. But I'll get into those soon enough. Anyway, issue I'm gonna I'm gonna review them issue by issue. So, um, issue one. It introduces a story about this new robot, um, which is like a stealth killing machine, and has a few cool scenes about uh, a completely reprogrammed um, Ed 209 that's been customized and um, used weaponized by criminals, and so Robocop has to come in and pretty cool, exciting, you know, cool action sequence. The Ed 209 tries to shoot him up, and then you know he goes in and then throws a stop sign and right right in its head fucks it up um ed, ed 209 goes boom the artwork i like it i think it's a big stack step up stack <laughs> it's a big stack yeah it's a big stack it's a big step up from um the, the artwork the inking by brian garvey and you know the penciling by mitch bird and is a lot better than Robocop Prime Directives, which I do not care for that comic. I think the artwork in that is atrocious. Um, but but um, this is technically a sequel, but I think it's better. I think it's better than that, at least. And um, so it, it introduces this mystery or whatever, and there's the look of the new robot. So the first comic is okay. I mean... There's not, you know, there's a little bit of action in it, and, you know, kind of an interesting story, so it was kind of fun, it's interesting to see RoboCop have to deal with a cop who's kind of a little bit prejudiced towards him, because he thinks he's not a real cop, he thinks he's just a weapon. So that was kind of interesting to see. Now, issue two, it, you know, this IRS guy comes in at the end of issue one and wants to make sure that RoboCop, you know, is functioning properly and so forth. And this is where RoboCop ends up figuring out the whole story behind why this robot is going around picking people up because this robot, the stealth bot, has been trying to kidnap and take away and been killing all of these guys who used to work for the RoboCop project, who helped build RoboCop. These are completely new characters that were never mentioned at all in the movies, but hey, it's okay for you know for this story's purposes. And there's these scientist guys, and 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 so there's a shady corporation. We never figure out or who it is. I'm thinking it's I'm I'm pretty much what I'm thinking is it's members of OCP who lost their jobs after OCP went under and created their own you know kind of dark horse company, and they want to get you know they want to build a better RoboCop. So that's pretty much the whole sort of thing, and they start off with this machine, which is a prototype based on one of the guys who worked on RoboCop. And then this machine's not, I don't mind the design, it looks kind of, it looks pretty cool actually. I thought the design of the, of the new uh, robot looked pretty cool. It's a lot better than a f stupid robot ninja. Um, the first confrontation between the robot 
the stealth bot and Robocop is kind of underwhelming though because the stealth bot doesn't really want to hurt him so it just flies away because it's not part of its objective because disappointingly enough you find out that the stealth bot it doesn't it pretty much what it's it's controlled by people you know commands so a bunch of people behind a desk like me just sitting here can just say something through a microphone and that's what makes the stealth bot do what it what it's supposed to do which is kind of underwhelming when you get to the final confrontation between Robocop and the stealth bot because then you could, the best way to beat it is just to find the guys who are behind the computer terminal knock them the fuck out put a gun against their head and say change the order and of course you know it's just really kinda underwhelming but you know there are some moments that are pretty cool now issue two I liked more than issue uh, th issue one because I thought it was an improvement because there's a little bit more interesting and intrigue and storyline and and, um, and a little bit of a confrontation between the stealth bot and Robocop so this really dumb cover aside I don't, I don't know what they were thinking it's still a decent um, issue um, the stealth bot comes in, tries to go after one of the last remaining guys uh, who worked on Robocop. Um, and and uh, this this is a weird name. It's a, uh, what's his name? It's Doctor Wizick or something. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty weird name that this guy has, Doctor Zizik. And um, so he's put into police custody, and so the stealth bot then figures out where the where his uh, safe house is and comes after him. And then uh, Robocop doesn't show up until later. After you know the stealth bot decides, okay, let's just the people who control the stealth bot decide, let's just kidnap the 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 um, cop guy. Let's kidnap the cop guy because you know why not? Because then we have some leverage. And then I really like this aspect where Dr. Uh, Sizik wants to meet up with Robocop. And so he asks him to meet up at the warehouse from the first film, you know, where he got shot, where he, you know, where uh, Murphy died. And I thought that was a really interesting, uh, a ta little, interesting little take on the story. I mean, you know, even this is a little bit, you know, from a from little bit of quotes from the comic. Ground Zero, where it all ended, where it all began. Within the crumbling walls of this old factory of flesh and, of flesh and blood, a flesh and blood man died, and the ultimate law officer was born. Inside Robocop and a piece of, ma of that man, inside Robocop, a piece of that man is still almost alive. It can still almost remember. It can almost see it happen all over again. Almost. And then he pretty much just you know, talks with Doctor Zizek for a little, Zizek for a little bit, and this is where you get the little, the robot bunny. It's just a couple, you know, pages. It's, it's not anything substantial. Um, then, for the fun crowd pleasing scene, Robo finds out that the IRS guy, who's a fucking dickhead, is is actually in on this thing. So of course he puts him under arrest. Um, then you get this sort of thing where the scientist guy who was one of the guys who worked on the program uh, got broken out of jail earlier he got broken out of jail I think at the end of the first yeah at the end of the at the end of the um, first issue I believe is where he got yeah he got broken out of jail at the end of the first issue and so he's working with this shadow company or whatever and they've asked him to try to work on a new robot which could you know end up having the brain of this uh, detective Haas this guy was kind of a dick to Robocop earlier in the film not in the film I mean I wish it was kind of a film because it might be a decent uh, part of a miniseries for a Robocop TV show if I would have rather have seen this being adapted on on uh, the miniseries instead of Prime Directives instead of what they did with Prime Directives um, but now we have the final issue of Roulette, which I think they used the same guy who did alien artwork for this, because this does look very aliens artworky. You know, it's not really a real word, but you, you know what I mean. Dr. Haas gets, gets uh, drugs, but he knocks out the guy before he can really do anything, 
And then Dr. Sizik explains about the new robot, and that it, that was just a prototype that I showed you there earlier, and now they need to find it. Now the robot's coming after Robocop, because that's the mission it has now, because they can't find Dr. Sizik. Um, Robocop comes up with a shotgun, shoots it in the face. It's kind of cool, you know, Robo shooting, you know, shotgun. Um, see, this is what I'm meaning. It's just a guy behind the fucking computer terminal. That's what it is. A guy behind the computer terminal. That's all it is. <laughs> the robot doesn't have a mind of its own. You know. And uh, so then Dr. Sizzik decides, okay, I'm going to try to sacrifice my own life to save Murphy's Robocops. And then you have some fun, cool little bits of scenes like this. Robocop fucking shoots in the face of the grenade launcher. That's pretty badass. I think that's pretty cool. And um, I also like this little bit of line before he ends up going to face it. Like on the bottom here. This line of dialogue he has. With uh, Dr. Lazarus from Robocop 3. She's all like, well, that sounds like a, he's talking about, you know, she's like, so you're going out in the street and having a showdown with a showdown you can't possibly win? Is that it? Staying here will only endanger you and my fellow officers. Marie, this is the truly best option. That sounds like a well-disguised, a man's got to do what a man's got to do to me. I have no plans to hide from this stealth robot, if that's what you mean. If it wants me, let it come and get me. Just, just pretty badass really he was like let it come get me and then boom here it comes and uh, so pretty much what happens is Haas comes in he saves the day before the robots about to mess up Robocop with his lasers and um, so then you know Robocop then takes a grenade pulls the pin drops it on the fucking thing blows it up I mean, one guy saying, it doesn't dangerous, it doesn't look very act active. Luke's can be deceiving. Pulls a pin or grenade, drops it, blows the fucking thing up. Before it can get uh, authorization to reactivate. And then the comic ends with a nice little scene with Dr. Sizek. Pretty much talking with uh, Dr. Lazarus and saying words like, um, how can you expect him to believe that I w wasn't as aware of the consequences of my actions when... I interface his brain with a machine. Murphy, he's a reasonable man, Doctor. That's just, that's it, just a man. We truly thought there wasn't enough tissue to retain retain any memory, of any memory of his humanity. But that's not how it turned out. I could see it in his eyes. He remembers who he was and is repulsed by what he's become. My God, listen to me. Here I am, horrified to learn that we used too much of Alex Murphy when we built RoboCop, and yet. I'm praying that somehow there's enough human in there for him to forgive me. So I, I like that little bit of line. It's kind of sappy, but, you know, it ties in with the whole, you know, emotional aspect of characters and the heart of, of Robocop. So I liked it okay. You know, I'm not really going to rate comics. I don't even know how you can rate a comic. But um, it was, uh, the story could have used a little bit more intrigue. Um, it was kind of predictable, but um, it was nice to see, read another, you know, read a RoboCop comic. Nice to see RoboCop, you know, have some scenes with a new robot. It was nice to see a new robot. I thought the stealth robot was pretty cool looking, and it was kind of disappointing that it was just, you know, the battle really wasn't much. I mean, that's the main big disappointment for me. And the first issue was just mainly just building the story, and then, you know, which is normal. But um, it could use a bit more action, a bit more memorable action. But, you know, what was there was decent. And, you know, I, like I said, if you're a fan of RoboCop, I would definitely, you know, if you could find these, uh, pick them up. But, you know, that being said, it's not the best RoboCop comics. You know, it's not, not the best RoboCop comics have to offer. I mean, Frank Miller's uh, RoboCop vs. Terminator is definitely better. But I thought this was a step up from Prime Directives. But anyway, really don't know what else to say, except uh, thank you for watching my comic book review of Robocop Roulette. And uh, maybe I'll do some more of these later with some of my Predator comics or some of my movie adaptations. You know, like uh, 
Last Starfighter and Raiders of the Lost Ark and Temple of Doom and Dune and a few other stuff. Like, I have a bunch of different comics and so forth. So, maybe I'll do something like that. And I do have more Robocop comics as well. I could always do some more reviews on the comics, Robocop comics that I have on my hard drive, which are scans. But anyway, um, thank you for watching this video. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's a little bit something different, but I hope you thought it was at least kind of interesting and kind of fun. And, um, if you want me to do more in the future, I'll gladly do so. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later. See ya.